Hey y'all, welcome to the country where it's just another day in paradise. Let's see what's going on. Hey y'all, it's Susan with Susan's Country Living and I'm out here in the garden. Um, a few weeks ago, I covered it up with my weed fabric and it is Labor Day here in um, down here in the southern part of Texas and I'm going to be planting some green beans, some pickling cucumbers, some yellow crookneck squash that I got from Thomas Moore backyard. He's in Navasota, Texas and I got these free from Haas. I ordered from them Golden Delight Zucchini and some um, Boston picklers. This time of year is really the best time to grow squash because the squash vine borer, uh, the, the little insect that lays those eggs is not around. So I don't have to really worry about that this time of year. Also the green beans will set, the blossoms will set when bloom time comes because it will be um, in October. And these, uh, these beans are some aroma and they are a 50 day bean, 50 days till harvest. My early golden crookneck is 42 days and my golden delight zucchini is 50 days. So that's putting me near the end of October, 1st of November. We normally don't get freezes until later in November around Thanksgiving. A couple years ago, we had a freak freeze for two nights, um, Halloween, and it killed all my squash and all my cucumbers and so I'm hoping that doesn't happen this year so let's go ahead and get started I got my blowtorch that I got off Amazon um, about 20 bucks had it, it came with a oh, no I order, also ordered a tank of butane it did not come with butane um, super easy to fill with the butane it's got a it's got a little reader on here and it just there you go it's really easy so we'll go ahead and get started Okay, so I've got my tape measure laid out here, and I came away from the end, so I'm not just right on the end. I'm gonna plant these seeds um, one every three inches. It said three to four inches. Now, when you plant a bean seed, you wanna look for what's called the radical. It's like the little eye, um, the little white part there, where it was attached to the plant. The roots are gonna come out of there. So if you plant this down, the roots gravity they just know they know to go down and they expend less energy not having to turn if you planted this with the radical up it's going to expend that extra energy to turn to go down so I'm going to plant them with the radical down I've got 80 seeds and I'm going to, I'm going to do like a, a block planting I'm not going to do a whole long row because I've got a lot of other things they're go, gonna go in the garden later. All the things for uh, winter, the cabbages, um, the kales, uh, all the greens, uh, sugar snap peas, um, and things like that. I tell you, the, the, the temperature right now is, is wonderful. It is, you know, it's almost 10 o'clock and it's only 75 degrees. So this rain cooled air is really gonna help me get this done. And I soaked my beans overnight so that they it will help with germination i'm so glad we got the rain this morning we really needed it and uh, it's gonna help my vegetables get a really good start so i'm gonna go ahead and and burn my holes every three inches and i did a little test over here to see how it did and it does really well use these yellow lines as a guide here so now I have um, one row I did 20 holes here I'm gonna plant four rows of 20 plants and kind of block them down here that uh, is, is, is space saving so I have just a uh, the bottom of a bamboo stick and I'm just gonna go down 
an inch and just make my holes here and I'll have to probably scrape up some soil to cover them because the soil is wet. I'm going to plant them with the radical side, the lower the little eye is. I'm going to plant them uh, down. I'm going to make my hole just a little bigger and plant that radical down and just cover it up like that. And this way if I have one that doesn't germinate, I think this package was 85% germination rate is what they had. You know, if I have one that doesn't germinate, I'll know just in a couple a couple days. Then I'll just come out here and, and put one in its place. Or, you know, maybe it rotted. Um, that can happen. But these are, these are fresh seeds. So I shouldn't have that problem unless we just get a ton of rain, which that's known to happen. This end of the garden flooded. About half my garden flooded in Hurricane Harvey water came up. This is in a slough down here. There's like a, a drainage ditch and it's naturally a slough, which is a lower area of water, a lower area where water drains to. And uh, it brought in all different kinds of weed seeds. And I started having weeds I'd never had had before. So um, that's why I'm, I'm doing this with this weed cover because I just can't seem to get rid of some of those weeds that are weeds that grow um, near the water, in the water, um, di all different kinds of grasses because it, all that drained down from north of here and um, yeah, lots of different weeds. So I'm just going to keep on planting. Okay, so I finished planting my first row here and now I'm going to start my second row. So I have come over um, 18 inches. From my first row, I've come over 18 inches um, from my first row and have burned my hole and now I'm just going to work my way back. Um, it's kind of halfway between the yellow lines and I'll go ahead and burn my second row here and I ended up doing it like putting the, the burner every four inches um, so the, the plants will be spaced four inches apart and I think that's going to work really well. Um, the soil was tilled, it's very fertile, so uh, there's gonna be plenty of nutrients and the, the roots will be able to go deep and this is gonna, this weed block's gonna help because there won't be the competition from the weeds. Okay, so I got my four rows, 20 plants in each row planted. And if I step back, you can see it's only just a little corner of my garden just that little bitty corner right there and then you know next year in the springtime you know the be those beans will be gone and um, you know, if I wanted to plant like squash there I would just pick the holes that I wanted to use because um, I try not to plant the same things in the same spot um, in consecutive years so I kind of rotate around so I'm gonna move on and we're gonna put some squash Probably in that spot right there that's empty. I gotta clear those old cucumber vines off from summer. And so I think I'm gonna plant some cucumbers down here in this section. I'm gonna plant cucumbers there in the summertime. And I gotta get a few of those weeds that are just um, on the other side of the railroad ties. But no weeds through this weed barrier, not even the nutgrass. The nutgrass was over there in the corner. So if nutgrass starts to come up in those holes, we have something that's a nut sedge killer that will only kill a nut sedge, which a nutgrass is. And I just put that little spray bottle and we spritz it on there and it will it will kill it, but not hurt anything else. So um, I'm excited to see how this works. Okay, so I'm gonna plant these early golden crookneck squash from Thomas Moore Backyard. Um, he is in Navasota, Texas. I got these at HEB. And um, there's not a whole lot of seeds in here, but it says Best Buy 312.23. So um, squash seeds will last quite a while. Um, these are open pollinated. They've not been um, hybridized as far as, so it'd be like, it, you know, non-hybridized, uh, open pollinated. Um, it says to plant them 
36 to 48 inches apart. The, the plants need to be spaced. Um, that and the rows. So, and so I'm going to come three feet off of those green beans. Um, no, about three and a half feet off the green beans. They won't get as big, the plants won't get as big in the fall as they do in the, the summertime. So I don't have to worry about them crowding out my green beans. And um, so I'm just gonna come three feet off the end of the garden, three, uh, three and a half feet away from those green beans and plant some of the squash seeds down here. I'm not gonna plant a ton of squash. Um, I don't have the time during the school year to, to put it up. Uh, I bread it and freeze it, and we use it for fried squash. I never, I've made squash pickles before. I may do that, and because um, I do like those. So we're gonna, I'm gonna get started burning my holes, um, measuring here. So I know that this line is the distance that I want. I think it's three and a half feet. Yeah, 41 inches. It said 38 to, 36 to 48 inches. And then I'm gonna come just three feet here and go ahead and burn my hole. And I'm gonna make a little bit bigger hole here because I'm gonna plant more than one seed. There we go. So let me show you my hole size that I did here. I just, I did, I did, you know, a hole about as big as the palm of my hand. Ouch. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah, don't touch it while it's hot. Um, and I need to kind of work the soil kind of get it flat and I'm going to plant um, three seeds here and then I will thin them to the best looking one because um, the germinate there's not a germination rate on here you know some of the some squash that vine like some zucchinis you know you can train them up a fence um, that, that vine you can plant them and let them spread in different directions um, as long as your soil is very fertile and very loose and you don't have weeds so I'm just kind of digging this and I'm thinking whenever I do transplants I'm, I have an auger it's like a you hook it to a drill and you just go down like that I'm gonna need that when I do transplants so that um, it, you know saves time and minimizes the, the soil that gets on top and I just brush it back in um, here so I'm ready. Now, with squash seeds, the same thing. I hope I can get this open. All right, there we go. Same thing with the green beans. You wanna plant the part that was connected to the fruit or to the plant um, so that the roots will go down. Y'all like my new overalls? I got them off eBay. Well, they're not new, they're, they're Dickies. And I tell you, overalls are super expensive in the store. You know, to go to Tractor Supply or Duluth or somewhere like that. 60 70 80 dollars i'm like no i'm not spending that for overall so i got on ebay and found this pair 30 dollars and um I, I had a pair that i wore for years and years and years to where it all just they just came apart because you know i'll just it's my uniform during the during the gardening season okay so the same thing You've got the part that was connected to the plant, so you want to, that little pointy part at the bottom, that's going to go down, because um, that's where the roots are going to come from. And I'm going to go down about, I'm gonna get, well, I'm going to do three seeds. Let me get three out. Three seeds. And I'm going to go down, that's about an inch and a half right there. Let me go down, let me make sure. Yep, exactly, an inch and a half. I'm gonna go down an inch and a half. One, two, three. Oh, there's a, you know what that is? That's nut grass. Get that out of here. Go. And then I'm gonna drop my little seed with the pointy side down into the hole. One, And I'm just going to cover it up and firm it. Make good contact there. That one disappeared. Oh, there it is. 
uh, used to I would I would make the hills and you could plant them around a hill and you and um, and just let them vine off the hill. Um, that takes up a lot of room. And you know the only problem I might have with the squash during the fall is powdery mildew. Um, I did have that one year over everything really bad in the fall because we have a very humid climate and it can be, you know, in the upper 80s and lower 90s till Thanksgiving. Um, just depends on, you know, the weather, weather patterns that we have. So I'm hoping I'm going to um, do my garden wash. I use Jerry Baker's uh, Gardening Secrets and use just common household objects. And there's one that you um, put, it's your garden wash. It's got brown mouthwash. You make a tobacco tea for insects. It's got uh, dish soap in it and you just use a, a hose in sprayer. And that brown mouthwash has alcohol in it and that helps um, kill any of your diseases caused by bacteria or fungus. And powdery mildew is a fungus. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm probably gonna plant Hmm, maybe four of, of these areas because we just want some, some fresh eating squash um, and a few to share. Nothing to have to, to spend a lot of time putting it up. So I'm going to get busy, finish planting these. Okay, so I got my crookneck squash planted. What I did is I kind of staggered um, and got five plantings in. Now, this... Um, this next squash, it's a zucchini. I got this free from, from Haas when I ordered Golden Delight Zucchini. Um, I'll put the link to the Haas. It's really HaasTools.com, but I'll put the link in the description. Um, it says to, the seed spacing is 18 to 24 inches, but the row spacing is 5 to 6. So I'm thinking that this is a vining type zucchini and I'm going to I'm going to clear off that cucumber vine there's a Juliet tomato that came up volunteer I just left it because it was at the edge and we're gonna have some tomatoes for the fall off that um, and I'm gonna plant them along this fence and just train them up the fence and see how that works kind of a little experiment so I have room to walk in when I come in my gate down here and the zucchini will be climbing up and I'll have yellow squash here and green beans here and then I will plant cucumbers down the rest of that fence. I may not plant just a ton of cucumbers there. So. Okay, so I'm going to come off, I think I'm going to start and just start at this T-post. There's a T-post right here, um, that green post and just um, you know, halfway between the edge and this first yellow line. These are about, I think that's a foot maybe. There, yeah, they're a foot apart. Um, and then come down five feet. Well, I may go on the other side of that tomato plant because I would like to leave that there. And there's a tea post down there by that tomato plant. Um, and just train it there. I've seen it on YouTube. I've watched some videos about training them and trimming off the bottom leaves um, as you pick fruit and that opens the plant up and less susceptible to the diseases, especially that powdery mildew that I get. It's bad here. So we'll get started. So the planting depth on these says one half inch and the germination rate is 98%. So I'm just going to plant two um, here in my hole that I did about the same size for the other squash. And this is a golden zucchini. I've never grown golden zucchini before. Um, and remember to plant the pointy side down. Okay, so I planted, I did three zucchini plants, one at each tea post, and then I'm gonna plant some cucumbers. Um, these are Boston picklers, um, really, really well. They're even good uh, just eating, fresh eating out of the garden. So I'm gonna plant these um, every six inches. I'm gonna come in um, if the bees let me. So they're, they're right there. 
um, this mess behind me is just kind of a border right now and it's got to be cleared out but there's lots of little flowering things in there right now weeds that are flowering and I'm just gonna leave them for the bees because they need something to eat and uh, so every six inches I'm gonna plant um, cucumber seed uh, one inch deep same thing you look for the part of the seed that was attached to the fruit that's the part that the roots gonna come from and you put that down so I'm gonna get busy burning my holes and getting my cucumbers planted and what I'll do is as they grow I have these clips these are great um, I got these like at a King Dollar or some sort of dollar store there's two sizes so as the the, the vine grows I can just pick it up and I just I use these bigger ones and I just clip it to the fence and then when it's cleanup time at the end of the harvest you just unclip them and if they do come apart they're super easy to put back together I just leave them clipped up here on the fence um, I use them for all sorts of things in the garden um, uh, tomatoes in their tomato towers that I have um, you know anything that, that that Juliet down there's probably got some attached to it but I like that they're just easy to take off they hold up really well to the weather uh, they were out here all summer in all kinds of, of weather so and um, so yeah if you find some of these grab you a couple of packages they're great so I got my cucumbers planted here and every six inches there's a seed and if um, one doesn't come up one or two doesn't come up that's okay um, I got the Boston picklers from it's a little seed shop little shop of seeds I'll post the link in the description below I think I've done that before on another video but it's a guy who he just he's they just come in a little little ziploc bag labeled with a that he prints out and super cheap just kind of a little side job that he's got there and I order from him and the germination rate is great and I've been very happy it's not like you get um, you don't have to buy like a ton of seeds to get a, a good discount um, like some of these little packages will be 50 to 75 cents um, really really economical especially if you've got a small area and you just don't need a lot of seeds to buy the seeds in a you know package um, you know there's there's money involved in that a lot more than just a little ziplock little zip, zipper bag and um, address label printed on your computer so uh, check that website out. Like I said, it'll be in the description. Um, it's starting to get warm um, the, and humid the, with the rain when the sun comes out. It's like a sauna, so I'm done. I'm done. Um, you know, I was grateful for the cooler weather this morning. I was dreading getting out here because when the sweat starts to drip into my eyes, it burns, and I need my sunglasses now because I'm squinting. I don't want the crow's feet. Um, I'm really diligent about that wearing sunglasses um, so I'm gonna be starting my seeds indoors so that'll be a different video uh, my cabbages and cauliflowers and kohlrabi and all the greens still trying to figure out how I'm gonna grow beets I think I have an idea uh, onions I'll just melt the hole and, and stick them in there and um, We'll see how that goes. So root crops are going to be a little more challenging. I think we're um, for potatoes, for new potatoes, we're going to get some grow bags and just put compost in there with some soil. And we've done that before, um, not in grow bags, but it was like in a wire cage and we lined it with a uh, weed block and they did pretty good. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to try the grow bags up closer, closer to the house. We've got a spot near the chicken house that will we'll put those for new potatoes but that's you could plant you can plant them in the fall but normally into February is when I plant my new potatoes um, red potatoes is I've done sweet potatoes before that's a mess um, I've done the fingerling potatoes they come up everywhere they're, they're like runners um, but they produce they produce really well but I'm, I just stick to my old red potatoes that I like to can and serve with green beans so I hope you have a good fall gardening season if I know some of you that are up north 
y'all y'all are harvesting right now and I'm watching everyone's videos about their canning and harvesting tomatoes and it's like mine's long gone by the end of June beginning of July it's over for me so all mine's in the in the early in the spring and early summer so hope y'all have a good fall gardening and winter gardening season um, it's great to be able to grow your own food and know where it comes from and know what's going on it um, and on, on our little homestead here we just have an acre and um, but this is enough for my husband and I and to share and to make some things to sell at the farmers market um, are with our chickens we, we have eggs with them we may get back into rabbits we raised rabbits for years when our boys were in 4-H and would have um, meat I'm thinking, you know, that we might do that again when I retire is to get a couple of buck and a doe and um, start harvesting some meat rabbits because it sure is good. Tastes like chicken. Better than chicken, really, I think. So, y'all have a good Labor Day and stay cool. Bye, y'all.